Okay, this question is about an experiment to determine the stiffness of a spring. Um, very, very typical, very usual experiment. Uh, so the student is suspending the spring from a fixed uh, support, his attic masses, and then he's taking measurements uh, and plotting the graph that you can see there, which is force against the extension of the spring. Uh, the first question is asking us to describe what the student should do to obtain the data to plot the force extension graph. So definitely if you're doing a force extension, you need a set of data, uh, a set of values for force, a set of values for extensions, right? So now the first thing we need to say here is that uh, we need to show the relation between mass and force. So usually in these experiments, we're using the slotted masses, the ones that you can see over here, all right? So usually these ones, they have kind of fixed values of, of mass, which is around five, 10 grams. Some of them are 20, some of them are five, but usually it's 10 grams. And we need to explain how do we convert the mass into force, just by simply, of course, converting it to kilograms and then multiplying by g, the acceleration of gravity. So, and this way, by adding more masses, that means we're adding kind of more forces, so we're getting values for, for force. Uh, alternatively, we can use a Newton meter, which looks something like that. Most of these Newton meters, on one side, they give you values for mass, and on the other side, they give you values for Newtons, right? So, directly, you can measure the newtons, the force from each one of these slotted masses, and then you can get the values directly, or you can use m times g to convert the masses to force. Um, now, how do I get how do I get measurements for the extension? Uh, for this one, of course, I have to measure the the initial length of the spring, and then add the load, add the masses, and then measure the new length. And subtract the two. So I have added one diagram to do that to explain that. So I'm starting with the first one. Let's say that this is the original length, L0, I'll call it L0. All right. And then you start adding masses. So you're measuring the new length, which is L. And then the extension, you'll be the difference between the original length and the length with the load. So if, for example, this is 10 centimeters and this is 11 centimeters of course it will be look, that will be the other way around so 11 minus 10 of course the extension will be one centimeter right so next point will be that to explain that relation and then to ensure that our measurements are correct we need to make sure that the ruler that we're using is vertical. So usually a typical setup is the one that you see on this diagram. So we usually we put the, the ruler with the clamp over there, but we need to make sure that we're using a set square and place it like that to ensure that the, the ruler stays vertical and therefore our measurements for length are quite accurate. And the last point will be, of course, to repeat these for different masses in order to get multiple values for length as well. So as shown in that diagram here, we repeat these with different masses, right? Therefore, we will be able to get a pair of values for the extension. So this will be L minus L0. Next one, we need to explain how we will use the graph to determine the stiffness of the spring. So I have copied the, the graph there, so I avoid going up and down. Now, when we're talking about the stiffness of the spring, we are talking about the spring constant. So the stiffness of the spring, we are talking about spring constant k. And if we refer to a Hooke's law, it says that the force that we are applying on the spring 
is proportional to uh, the extension. So sometimes you can find these as delta f, which is a change in f and the change in extension. All right, and by rearranging that, we get force divided by extension. Now, what is really the spring constant? If a spring has a spring constant, let's say I have that spring, it has a spring constant of five newtons uh, per meter, and then I have another spring that has a spring constant of 10. So what does this mean? It means that the first, the first spring, I need to apply 10 newtons of force to extend it by one meter. The second spring, I need to apply 10 newtons of force to extend it by one meter. So in that case, the second spring will be more stiff because I need to apply more force to have the same extension. All right, so back to the question. Uh, the spring constant will be given by rearranging the Hooke's equation. Therefore, the spring constant, the stiffness, will be given by force divided by extension. And from our experience in how to deal with, with graphs, we can see that we can find that uh, value by calculating the gradient. So the gradient will be equal to the spring constant. Now the gradient, we know that is the change of y over the change of x, or sometimes you can find it as y2 minus y1, and then x2 minus x1. All right, but we need to be careful because um, we need to find the gradient on the linear region of the graph. If we look at the, at the region where it starts uh, kind of curving, then the hook so doesn't apply, so the, all these equations, they don't apply. Yeah, so we need to ensure that we're using values on the linear region.